Hi, everybody. <laughs> Wait a second. Yay. <laughs> All of this technical stuff. Yes. Okay. And I want to see you guys and not me. Yay. <laughs> so much prettier to look at you lot than to look at myself. All day long I can look at myself. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so welcome to this evening. Uh, we start already, otherwise it just gets later and later. And it's anyway uh, a while before we actually begin to meditate. So the theme for tonight is that old chestnut, <laughs> freedom in form. And a lot of it will, for many of you, will be repetitive a little bit because so many times we talk about these things and there's a world of difference, a universe of difference between talking and thinking and conceptualizing and stepping into the direct experience. And in this, being very boring and repetitive is quite helpful because the mind hasn't gets fed up with grasping at it, and then it, we just switch to how would that feel? So freedom. What on earth is freedom? <laughs> so often we think about freedom as something which is the opposite of imprisonment. That freedom is what we get when we're enlightened and we don't have to suffer anymore. So it's the opposite of suffering, maybe, or the opposite of being alive. <laughs> Sorry. The opposite of, it's actually not funny, it's very dark humour, but that's allowed in this part of the world. Uh, that freedom is to be free of uh, any limitation. Often we think of freedom like that. We define freedom by conditions. And in that, freedom gets hijacked into the world of form and conditions because the a belief and a practice and a conditioning gets born which is that to be free you have to be free of something and that it's not possible to be free at the same time as being limited in a body maybe with restricted possibilities, maybe with restricted movement, maybe with a restricted uh, chance to access certain experiences. For example, women, as women, of which we are many tonight, <laughs> We're not really free to have a direct experience of what it is to be a man, are we? <laughs> if freedom is conditional on us being in a form. So we, to be free to experience being a man, we would have to have a male body. So we can never be free. And if we were a man, we wouldn't be free to experience being a female. if it was conditional on the form of the body, which means that we could never be free. Which means that humans can't be free if we think like this. If freedom is all about the conditions that we find ourselves in. So from there, it's a short step to thinking, OK, so freedom. It's not a human thing because you've got a human body. And human bodies can't fly like a bird. So it's not real freedom. It's a prison to be here in a human body. And little by little, we begin to believe that there is no such thing as freedom down here. <laughs> Notice the down here. It's like down here, we're it. This is hell, right? Only freedom up there in heaven. <laughs> so we kind of build a hell of slavery for ourselves. Because we make our freedom, we imprison our freedom in conditions. And it's a kind of suffering and a kind of torture because we remember very, very well what freedom is. Somehow, deep down, 
in every cell of our body, we have an innate knowing of freedom, even a certainty of freedom. A total trust in our freedom. Even if we're screwed over, we have this innate non-negotiable sense of freedom. That's the part of us which suffers when we feel we're being lied to or being manipulated or being controlled or being bullied or being pushed in this direction or that direction. It's the part that says, no, no, I'm free. I'm free to choose. I'm free to be as I need to be. It's interesting because we remember that we are free with almost with every breath and every moment of consciousness. And yet the mind is all the time telling us that we're not actually free until later. Not like this. That freedom can be lost and freedom has to be earned. That freedom can be abused, that it's a conditional thing. And then we get this sense of like an ideal or a concept of freedom which is disconnected or dissociated from the actual feeling of freedom. What it actually feels like in the, in the heart, in the heart of our living aliveness to know that we are free, that this is free. Whatever we are, it is inherently free. So a freedom that can be lost because we're in a body is not real freedom, it's a concept. A freedom that can be lost when we are limited or locked up in a certain space is not real freedom, it's a concept, it's a commodity. It's, it's false goods that we've been sold. A freedom that says only when or only if is not freedom, it's a power game. It's a competition, it's a split. So when we find in our processes of meditation and exploration, we find those spaces where we are radically free where the experience of freedom comes alive very, very strongly, what often comes forward is the next step is, okay, but are, are you free now? Are you free in a body? Are you free when you go to the supermarket? Are you free when you're feeling really, really angry with your husband or with your partner? Are you free when you're old and the body is failing and you can no longer run thousands of miles? The conditions will come forward. With a kind of question mark, you're free now, now you're free, <laughs> now do you remember you're free? And the irony is that actually in those moments of doubt, uncertainty, restriction, those can sometimes be the golden moments where we remember how truly free we are and how nothing can ever take this away from us. Those moments of extreme distress can sometimes be the breakout points where we... We remember what's here at the essence. So one thing that's clear when we begin to talk about freedom and freedom in form, not freedom from form, that's liberation, but freedom within any form, the mastery of form. One thing that becomes clear is that there is us, there is the freedom, and there is the form, how we appear to be. The body is a form. For example, there is freedom and there is this body and we're looking for freedom in being in a body. Or living through a body is a better way to say it. Our imagination and our thoughts, these are forms. So. We're looking for the freedom to feel that we are alive and radically free, even though thinking is happening. And even to have freedom to engage in the thoughts and to become a thought and then to release a thought. 
You see, there's a space, like a dimension shift between the freedom and the form. And the freedom manifests maybe as the form. But we forget that. Take a feeling, for example. Out of pure free f freedom, the feeling of anger arises. Let's say there's no censorship, no repression, no suppression. Somebody does something completely assholic and the feeling of anger arises out of freedom. Only later does the mind come in and say, no, 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 this is not allowed and the anger shouldn't have arisen. and this is, this is not part of our freedom and this will cause trouble. When anger arises or an emotion arises out of freedom, it's a form which is moving out of freedom, through freedom and returning back to freedom. If we let it, like a solar flare, whoosha, rage. Maybe it's even bad, resentful, ancestral rage. Doesn't matter. A solar flare of feeling, shame, rises up out of freedom, shows up through the freedom of the body, blushes the cheeks, heats up the, uh, the loins and makes the armpit sweaty and comes out the top and vump. Freedom, and to freedom it returns. Born in freedom, showing up in freedom and returning to freedom. But there is something very much connected with our evolutionary process, connected with fear, connected with preservation, which says, no, 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 no. If you let yourself be free, you will lose your freedom. It's such a, we got ourselves into such a paradox. So if we let that happen, if we let that emotional naturalness, that aliveness just flare up from past experience, didn't that lead to us killing somebody? Didn't that lead to us harming or saying the wrong thing? Didn't it get us into trouble? Didn't it get us punished? So we interfere with it and we push it down. We cut it off, we, make, we try and interfere with the freedom in its naturalness, which is also a freedom free movement, but it's now from the, from the area of fear-based mind. No, 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 you'll lose your freedom if you are free. There'll be consequences to your naturalness. Well, I don't know where all of this began, because the tragic effect of this is when we repress our anger and say, no, it cannot be a solar flare that lights us up for three seconds, and we repress it, is that the chances of us hurting somebody else actually goes up. The chances of explosion and blaming somebody else actually increases when we repress our naturalness. Why? Because something is denied to us as if from the outside. So now that same anger which is denied as a natural movement is like turns into blame towards the outside because he made me angry. Because of him I am angry. So I give the anger back to him. And then we get into this cycle where, where there is this like increasing suffering around our naturalness in which we learn to believe that this is actually because we were just letting ourselves be here in freedom. So no, 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 don't let yourself be free here. Not safe. This is a programming we are learning to undo by softly, softly showing the nerve system of each one of these precious bodies of ours that we carry, that we live through as a service, by showing it that actually it's not dangerous to be and to feel whatever it is we feel in freedom. That the world will not end, that we will not become evil if we are free. You know, we can say it a thousand times, you know what, true nature is not evil, naturalness is not evil, humans are not inherently evil, we don't have to kind of control them and bully them and beat them and conform them and make them perform like monkeys. They're not inherently evil. Left to their own devices, they might actually be incredibly sweet, caring, loving beings. These humans. It could it, our true nature might actually be kind. Not murderous and destructive and riotous. 
And the only way we can find our way back to this inquiry, what is our true nature, is through freedom. And, you know, you open the doorway of freedom, then the doorway of authenticity and truth, truthfulness, opens all by itself. It is what it is, how it is for as long as it is. You open the doorway of freedom and the doorway of naturalness opens all by itself. And the easiness of not having to twist ourselves into other shapes and sizes, not having to conform ourselves to what we believe is expected of us, not having to perform in our work or in our lives to an invisible audience as if the universe was waiting with a watch for us to get enlightened already and it's looking at its watch, the universe, and saying, oh, you're running out of time. <laughs> Time's going to soon be over. You're not there yet. You didn't get it yet. You're... So we have to perform to the universe. Notice the word form, form, form coming up. Conform, perform, deform our energy to make ourselves feel what we are supposed to feel, what we learned we have to feel at a certain moment, which is based on what everybody else appears to be feeling. And what everybody else appears to be feeling, the way they've deformed their energy, somebody died, we're all sad. The way they are deforming their energy, it becomes the authority on how we deform our energy and everybody looks at everybody else and it all slows down in vibration as we get further and further away from the freedom of form, of authenticity, of direct, seamless togetherness, naturalness, honesty. So between the form, which is sometimes an object and sometimes it's a thought or an imagination. Sometimes the form is a feeling like an emotion, an energy. Sometimes it's a physical object. Between the form of experience and the freedom, there is this gap. There is this freedom which we are in our essence, in our consciousness. Our consciousness is always free. Otherwise we wouldn't be able to distract ourselves from, from pain and watch Netflix. We can do that because our consciousness is free. It's free to go in and pick things up and it's free to put things down. It's free to, free to be born and it's free to die. So between this freedom and the form, there is this gap. And this gap is where all the information is flowing in both directions. The information of this world, this dimension, is flowing into consciousness. And the information of what this soul is bringing into this world, the quality information, the love, the peace, the beauty, the learnings, the wisdom, is flowing outwardly back into the world, taking form, information. There is this flow of subtle information and, and information isn't just, you know, newspapers. It's sentient, feeling information, emotional information, vibrational information, atmospheric information. Information, that, how do we know we're free? Because we are informed by our freedom. It informs us. So out of our consciousness, there is this freedom, informing, forming, taking form as a body, in naturalness, in seamless harmony with the whole, in attunement with the whole family of bodies and life and beings, which is here, here through multiple dimensions. But this form is depending on two things. One thing that a form depends on is a limited portion of time. Every form has a particular lifetime. 
So it could be you have a pencil and the pencil was made. It was the birth of the pencil. The pencil lives a life. At first it was very long. It gets shorter and shorter. It's used to write many books. <laughs> and in the end, the last bit of lead breaks in the pencil and it's the end of the pencil's lifetime. The time has passed for the pencil. The wood goes back to, to ash. The lead goes back, finds its way back to the world of lead. It's got a limited, limited amount of time. It has its own lifetime. So freedom in time becomes a, a key thing when it comes to being free in form. To feel the mastery of time, to feel that we have a living connection with the sense of time, with the eternal which is there in every moment with the timeless one that we are and the time which is passing through us. This becomes an important factor of finding freedom in form. So much of the form which we are is based on time, our memory, our imagination, our expectation, our learning is happening in slow motion through this ordering of time. Our wisdom into cause and effect to the true causality of the universe. It's happening through a slowdown of time in which we see deeply into time. And of course, this body of ours, it has a beginning, a middle and an end. It's passing through time. It's a form. But this life which we are, which is manifesting through this body of ours is part of another dimension because whatever it is, this mystery of life, which we are, it's always here. There was life before we were born. We, be we are that life with a body, consciously now. And there's life after we leave. The life which we are is continuous. It would appear to be timeless. Or at least from another kind of time which doesn't seem to be passing so fast. So the freedom in time is an important ingredient of the freedom in form. And this comes down to little things. How much stress do we carry? Stress which closes down our immune system, our immunity, which closes down our senses, which limits our enjoyment of life, which often builds up into layers of depression and non-feeling. How much stress do we carry because we don't think we have enough time? The pressure of time, all the time the pressure of time conforming us into certain rhythms which are not our natural rhythms, pushing us into certain behaviours or certain restrictions making us feel very, very afraid of dying or of losing because everything's passing and we've well, so much need to keep, to keep, to keep because we were so busy chasing after time that we forgot to actually look deeply into it and to touch the eternal, the eternity that's in the flower. The timelessness of a moment where you actually feel yourself to be alive. You look at the sky. You use eyes to see the miracle of the sky, the miracle of seeing. So busy, 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 running, 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 chasing, chasing, running from, running to, escaping, building stress, never arriving, never coming home. Sometimes not even quite able to release into the timeless space of sleep because there seems to be such a limitation on time. So this is where we lose a lot of freedom to be here. A lot of freedom to experience. And we are the masters of time. When we go into and we have quantum brains and quantum minds, we're able to do this. Every animal can do it. Every tree can do it. When we move into the now, into the present moment, we pierce the veil of time and we become eternal, eternally connected, timelessly one in that moment. It's the moment in which the whole history of the universe exists and the whole future exists only in this moment. Freedom 
And this moment passes to the next moment, freedom. And it passes to the next moment, like a river flowing, freedom, 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 freedom. Aliveness, refresh, possibility. The other element of form where we lose our freedom is space. Every form, just as it has a limited lifespan, takes up a certain amount of space and belongs in a certain dimension. So the first dimension of space where we feel, seem to feel restricted collectively is this world, what we call this world. The physical dimension. Who made that up? Who says there's only one dimension and it's the physical and there's, there's nothing above the ceiling and there's nothing under the floor and what we can see and experience with our physical senses without even exploring what our physical senses can do, that is the physical dimension. Such a limitation on space. Yeah, yeah, God, angels, yeah, afterwards, later, when we die, later, on the timeline. Yeah, 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 life everlasting, yeah, 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 that's when we die, later, later, later. Yeah, yeah, the mystery, well, if it's a mystery, it's a mystery, isn't it? We can't know it, so, so it doesn't exist. We can't see it, we don't have to believe in it. Big limitation on space, and every meditator knows that. You go inside, you travel to places which are unlimited, boundless, and yet so much alive. And even if there's not a direct experience of that, there is this sense of the possibility of this because there's so much more space sometimes on the inside than there is when we look out through our filtered, conditioned mind into the world. And yet it's all out there as well. Multiple dimensions, dimensions of love, dimensions of peace, dimensions of exquisite bliss, where the plant, the petals of one flower is touching the leaves of another plant and it's quivering in the warm wind with the dewdrops of the morning. Bliss happening. Created form. Something so alive, so miraculous. But no, we're limited in space. We're in the physical dimension and that's it. It's a cardboard box with paper cutouts. And we're in this limited space of a body, we say. And of course, the, the body does take up a certain amount of physical space, but it also takes up a certain dimension of spiritual space and a certain vibration. And how do you say it? There's a boundlessness like this and there is a penetration like this. We can check it out. What's the space of our feeling capacity? Is it like our skin surface? That's how, far, how much space we can take with our feeling, with our love? Or can we fill up the room with our love? Or does it not even translate into the physical space? So the love that I feel for the beloved, for my partner, <laughs> over there with his vape, do I need him next to me in order to feel that love? Or can I feel it also if he's on the other side of the building? Just the same intimacy, just the same love. Freedom in space, freedom in form. And if he was on the other side of the world, wouldn't I feel the same intimacy of love? Perhaps even more purely, without his body in the way. <laughs> but again, freedom in space, freedom in form. And if one of us should die, would we not feel each other just as intimately? every moment, every essential, timeless moment. Now we have freedom through multiple dimensions, freedom in space, freedom in form. You know, our meeting here every Wednesday is an action of freedom in space and, and freedom in time and freedom in form. Each one of us sitting at different corners of the world, meeting in a particular group energy which by now has a whole soul of itself that calls us, that reminds us, that waits for us, that nurtures us. And we can all connect with it, irrespective of our time zone, irrespective of the distance between us, irrespective of our, many of us never having physically met. And there's such an intimacy, such a blend, such a harmony. 
This is freedom in time and freedom in space. And of course, freedom in time and freedom in space, that would be static if there wasn't this other ingredient, this amazing other ingredient, which is movement. Something is moving through it all. And, you know, there are some nihilists that talk about it being a thought, that God is thinking, and that's how we got creation. And maybe thought reflects something of what's happening at the source of the universe, where there is this freedom of creation, this freedom of form. But it feels much more when you look into your own life, maybe you can check it out, that the thing that's moving the thing that's moving through form and bringing forms together and is awakening forms and birthing forms and receiving forms when forms are done is this quality of love. Meaning freedom is moving on the wings of love in a way. It's the movement which means that the, the box now starts to shake with an aliveness. The animal is animated. The gravitation of the planets around each other in a harmony, the movement of souls towards each other, the magical meetings, and the trust that when there's a separation that there will be a, a reunion again. This is all movement facilitated by this love. And it's a love which moves quite unconditionally in freedom because freedom is always unconditional. It moves. Hello, I'd let somebody in. It moves with something like a river. Now a river, you can't hold it, you can't grasp it, you can't limit it. It's always there, the river, but it's never the same. It's so alive. It's part of the ocean, part of the sky, part of every moment of our physical being. This principle of movement, so close to the principle of life, creation, freedom in form. So when we're feeling stuck, feeling restricted, feeling pushed around, bullied, limited, conformed, isolated, these principles of to remember that we have freedom, we're the masters of time, we're the masters of space, and we're the masters of love. Meaning it won't do what we tell us to do, but we can unlock the timeless. Because we are that. We can unlock the unbounded infinity of space and infinite possibility because we are that. This is what we are ultimately made of. And we can unlock all the power of creation, which is there in movement, which is in its essence, the essence of essence is found deep, 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 deep in our being. In this very amazing quality, which led us to be here in the first place, which is this quality of love. We fell in love with creation. We fell in love with forms. That's why we're here. And it's not a punishment. It's not something we did wrong. We fell in love with the forms of life because they are so extremely beautiful, seen from a certain perspective. We fell in love with this planet, we fell in love with her flowers, with her creatures, we fell in love even with humans, with our mother and father. We fell, but we didn't fall from grace, we fell into grace, as grace. We are the grace falling in freedom. So that was a big topic, <laughs> again. And so we take a little break and then we will meditate a little bit and see what comes forward in freedom. <laughs> we come back in five minutes. Five minutes. So welcome back, everybody. The 
It's so nice to see you all again. So I'd like you to find a position which is comfortable. This could be in a chair or maybe lying down on a mattress or on the floor. And when you found a position which is comfortable, I'd like you to connect with your physical body. Just try to experience, to feel the physical body. Maybe you can also feel the heaviness of the physical body. And in feeling the heaviness of the physical body, of the gravity. Are you pulled down on the chair or the mattress you're sitting on or lying on? Maybe you can allow yourself to move into the chair into the mattress, into the floor, with the gravity. Do just move with the gravity, where the gravity is pulling you. And maybe it's possible to leave the gravity behind in the chair, in the mattress or in the floor, in the sofa. To surrender the gravity.
I'm going to like you to connect with or to visualize a rock or a mountain. can visualize or make a feeling connection with a rock or a mountain. And maybe you can imagine how it would be to be that rock or to be that mountain. And maybe it's even possible to feel the aliveness, to sense the aliveness of the rock or the mountain you became. And maybe it's even possible to feel the sense of freedom from the rock or the mountain. And then I like you to connect, to visualize with an animal.
maybe it's possible to replace yourself inside this animal. To imagine that you are this animal. Maybe it's possible to be conscious of what this animal is doing, how it moves. And let it express and do whatever it needs to express and do. And being this animal, maybe it is possible to sense the aliveness in the animal. Maybe it's also possible to sense the freedom of the animal. The sense of freedom of the animal you are right now.
how would it be to become this tree? Maybe you could imagine how it is to become this tree. And maybe we can get a sense in being this tree of the aliveness of the tree. Maybe it's even possible to feel the freedom of the tree. And then letting go of the tree. I'd like you to visualize, to connect with a bird. And maybe it's possible to imagine that you are this bird.
And maybe it's possible being this bird to move with the bird as it needs to move. Maybe we can get a sense of the aliveness of the bird. We're able to feel the aliveness of the bird. Maybe it's also possible to experience this, experience the freedom of the bird. And in letting go of the bird, maybe we can connect, visualize, contact ourselves. Maybe it's possible to imagine that you are yourself.
And maybe it's even possible to get a sense of the aliveness of yourself. Maybe you can feel the freedom experience the freedom of yourself. And maybe it's possible to give me some power to place music.
Okay. It takes five minutes to come back to the here and now, and then we move on. And we want to say to all the people on YouTube, hope to see you next uh, week, and bye.